Okay guys, we're going to use this information here as we work through the video. So feel free to uh, pause this, maybe print screen it, maybe open um, a separate copy of the video in another window. Do whatever you need to do to, uh, to keep this problem in front of you and uh, we'll refer to this as we work through this problem and figure out how to record all of these transactions and then also when we determine what the uh, net income is going to be. It says on September 1st of the current year, Maria Edsall established a business to manage rental property. She completed the following transactions during September. Okay, and there's A all the way through J. <clears throat> the first thing it asks us to do is to indicate the effect of each transaction and the balances after each transaction using the following tabular headings. Okay, so this is this right here. We have our assets, we have our liabilities, and we have our stockholders' equity. Okay, in a corporation, this is known as stockholders' equity. It's a partnership or some other form that's not corporate a business. It's just known as owner's equity. So our assets are broken down into cash, accounts receivable, supplies, our liabilities. In this problem, the only one that we have is going to be accounts payable. And the capital stock, dividends, fees earned, rent expense, salaries expense, supplies, auto, and miscellaneous all affect shareholders' equity or, or stockholders' equity there. It can be known as either one of those, shareholders' or stockholders' equity. Okay, so for the first problem here, it says, um, A, we opened a business bank account with a deposit of $40,000 $40, in exchange for capital stock. So remember, our accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, always has to be in balance. Okay, so $40,000, our cash increase, didn't it? It says that we put $40,000 in a bank account, so that went up. Well, equity also went up. Okay, so see this $40,000 here? We, we exchanged stock for cash. So capital stock increased and cash increased. So we have an increase in our assets. We have an increase in our equity. Remember, debit, I'm sorry, uh, the accounting equation always has to be in balance. Okay, the next letter is B, purchase supplies on account for $2,200. Okay, so supplies, we're going to consider those an asset. We bought a lot of them. They're going to last us a while. We bought pens, file folders, paper, all this stuff. So we have an increase in our asset, and we also have an increase in accounts payable. We bought these on account. Had we purchased these for cash, we would have had, and we still would have had an increase in our supplies, but we would have had a decrease in cash. But because we bought these guys on account, we have an increase in an asset, and we have an increase in a liability. C, received cash from fees earned from managing rental property, $6,000. Okay, so we received cash of $6,000, and what did we do? We managed rental property. This is uh, fees earned, right? So this is income. This is revenue. And revenue increases equity. Okay? Expenses decrease equity, which we'll see in the next problem or the next letter. But this is revenue. This is money that we earned doing what it is that we do to earn money in our business. Okay? So D, we paid rent on our office and equipment for the month. $2,700. So our cash went down by $2,700, and we incurred a rental expense. Okay, so we have this expense here, $2,700, and our cash increased by $2,700 here as well. Now notice as we're going along, I forgot to mention this, but we're asked to always to also keep a running balance, a running tally. And so right now our cash is uh, $43,300. Our supplies are $2,200. Our liabilities are $2,200. Capital stock is $40,000. Fees earned is $6,000. And rental expense is a negative $2,700. Our assets is going to, if we added all these assets up, they will equal our liabilities plus all of our owner's equity. Okay? So take a second if you want to, do the math, and you'll see that, in fact, that's true. We're in balance. Okay, E, we paid creditors on account. So earlier we were buying things like supplies 
and um, we we increased we had an increase in our accounts payable. That's an amount. Think of that like as an IOU that we owe someone. Well, now it's time for us to pay up. So we're paying the thousand dollars. So our cash went down by a thousand. So see, we went from forty three three hundred to forty two three hundred. Okay, and also our accounts payable. Our this liability, this IOU that we owed somebody else decreased. It went down by one thousand dollars to one thousand two hundred dollars. Okay. If we build customers for fees earned for managing rental properties, five thousand dollars. Now this circumstance here in accounts receivable, that's where we provide provide a good or service and we don't receive payment right away. Okay, um, instead of receiving cash, we received a promise to pay cash to us. Okay, so that's what this five thousand dollars is here. Okay, so it says here that we earned. Um, $5,000 of, uh, of fees for, for performing uh, the services, and they're going to pay us later. Now, remember here, we're going to, um, we're operating in a system of accrual accounting. So that's what's um, mandated under generally accepted accounting principles. So as opposed to cash basis accounting, where you record expenses and revenues uh, when the cash actually um, is received by you or paid by you, in accrual accounting, we record um, revenue and expenses when they're incurred here. Okay, so in this example, when we earned this, we, we put it into our accounting records. Okay, so if this was cash basis, we would it wouldn't have shown up until we actually received the money. But here, you know, sometimes you'll have periods where you'll you'll earn income and um, and maybe you're not paid until you know maybe you do a big job and it takes you a couple of years to to actually ultimately collect all the money. But under accrual accounting, as you're earning it, you record parts of it. And in this case, we just happen to. To, to get um, to earn it before we got paid, and probably within a few, you know, maybe 30 days, we would would receive uh, the five thousand dollars. And at that point, we're, I imagine we're going to have an entry later to show this. But when that happens, then we reduce the accounts receivable and increase the amount of cash. Okay, G, paid automobile expenses for the month, which was six hundred dollars, and miscellaneous expenses of three hundred. Okay, so we would we spent nine hundred dollars, right? Our cash went down nine hundred, and what do we do with it? We have an automobile expense, and we have a miscellaneous expense. Now, notice these are negatives. This doesn't mean that it's a negative expense. It just means that it has a negative impact on shareholders' equity. Remember, the revenue increases it, and these expenses all reduce it. Okay, H paid office salaries. $1,900. Cash, once again, we're paying it, right? This is cash going out. We're paying somebody $1,900. Salaries expense, we record that over here. So our assets equal our liabilities plus owner's equity, right? Always got to stay in balance. And what you're seeing as we've gone along through here, it's possible to, uh, to have situations where maybe you increase one asset and decrease another one, and, and perhaps you increase an asset and increase a liability, or increase an asset and increase um, equity. There's lots of different combinations, but always, we always have to stay in balance. Okay, um, I, we determined that the cost of supplies on hand was $1,300. Therefore, the cost of supplies used was $900. Okay, so right here, this column is supplies. We're gonna reduce the supplies by $900. Okay, we use that amount. What we're doing here is we're taking this asset and we're showing the amount of it that was consumed. So if $900 was consumed here, we're going to reduce the asset and we're going to increase this expense over here. And an increase in an expense has a negative impact on stockholders equity. Lastly, we pay dividends. Okay, so we're paying dividends. Cash is going out $1,800 and um, we record this dividend here. This is not an expense, okay? A dividend is not an expense. This is a distribution of earnings to the owners. However, it does also reduce stockholders equity. Now let's take a look here. So we've talked about this. Uh, determine the net income for the period. The net income is going to be the difference between these fees earned reduced by all these expenses. Simply $4,600 is the, is the answer to that. 
And the answer to, to the fourth problem here says how much did September's transactions increase or decrease retained earnings? And we can see here the retained earnings was increased by $2,800, which is net income reduced by the amount of dividends. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.